Question. What the Azra Kamal, Wendy Nell, Carolyn Pierce, and Dorothy Barton all have in common? Well, they, along with over a hundred other women, aged 9 to 102, all ended up in the same final resting place. And that resting place was at the Kent and Sussex Hospital. And this is it here, which you can see it's now closed down. You can tell by the sign. And this hospital is situated in a place called Tunbridge Wells, a market town situated in England. And by coincidence, all of the aforementioned ladies have had a relationship with this gentleman. Although I'm not quite sure relationship is the correct term. Morning. Morning. David, Morning. it's the place. Now meet one David Fuller, electrician slash handyman who worked at the hospital for over 30 years. Now David was a pretty well-liked individual and he worked the night shift from 11 till 7 in the morning. Changing light bulbs, rewiring electrical systems and probably lots in between. You know the score. If something needed sing to, I guess David was your man. The Rocky Balboa of handyman, and he had access to every part of the hospital. Now with over 30 years working there, he was a pro. No one questioned his shit. But I guess David couldn't control everything running smooth. And it was in 1987 that the unassuming peaceful town would soon pop up on the roadmap. It was on a Monday night the Wendy Nell's boyfriend picked her up from work at the photo development joint and dropped her off at home. He wanted to come up with her, but she said she were on her period and he'd best give it a miss. The 25-year-old, recently separated from her husband, I guess she were enjoying a little freedom. The next day when her boyfriend came back around again, I guess to check if her period were finished, he came into her room. The window was open. She was laying on the bed, naked. She'd been beaten raped and fucked in every hole that God had given her. And by all accounts, it was a brutal crime. The cops were baffled, with the only motive being lust. And after cops had cleared the boyfriend who was obviously devastated, they didn't have a clue. And the case went colder than a retard's tongue licking ice cream off of the floor. And the small town was shaken by the death of one of their own. It was only five months later, the pretty waitress, 20-year-old Carolyn Pierce, was last seen getting out of a cab in front of the bedsit that she rented in a small house. She'd been out drinking with friends. Neighbors heard a scream, but when they looked out, she was gone. She disappeared into thin air like a ghost. A pretty English ghost. A dog walker found her early one morning with three weeks worth of rot. A few miles from the room she rented, she'd been beaten, strangled, fucked. You know the score. She'd recently confided with an ex-boyfriend that she figured she were being stalked and had taken to locking her windows. Cops figured she'd been murdered in the graveyard behind her apartment, then transported a couple of miles away where she was dumped. Like a piece of garbage. A pretty piece of garbage. Either way, it had the same M.O. as the previous murder five months earlier. Fish and chip eating cops at Tunbridge Wells figured they had a serial killer on the loose. But I guess solving crimes of rape and murder ain't big on the Tunbridge Well cops to-do list. And the case went cold. And officers retired, joined the force, and retired again. And the two young women's memories faded. It was over 33 years later, pretty 24-year-old law graduate Azara Kamal was driving home with a friend after visiting her mother in Tunbridge Wells that she started to experience engine difficulties. Yeah, that's definitely a difficulty. Pulling over to the hard shoulder, her car exploded and her and her friend jumped to safety with Kamel jumping over a railing that she thought was the center divide. But instead, it was a 35 foot drop to the road below. Paramedics arrived, but she was pronounced dead at the scene an hour later. And the young woman, who seemingly had a whole life ahead of her, was gone. Her mother was devastated, spending the night with her daughter's body in her arms, sobbing. It was early in the morning, at the start of his shift, that a mortuary worker reported seeing fluid dripping out of Azara's body. I don't even know why he were looking there, but he figured it was his. He reported it to his bosses, 
But they told him he must be imagining things because no one had been there all night and the place had been locked up. And besides, there was maintenance work being done and the lights had been fixed. It was just a few blocks away. The Tunbridge cops had finally got their shit together and were running DNA tests on historical cases. And they decided to throw the jizz that they'd scraped out of Wendy and Carolyn into their blender. And the overpriced milkshake maker came up with 90 probable suspects. And after the cops cleared each and every one of them, there was one left, Freddie Fuller. But the 86 year old had never been near Tunbridge Wells but he said he had a cousin who worked and lived there. In fact, he still worked at the local hospital. Yeah, you guessed it, Mr. Fix-It, David Fuller. From there, they went straight to the potential serial killer's house. And when they got there, he just returned home from work. And when they confronted him with their findings, he didn't even deny it. It's like he knew it wasn't if the hammer would fall, it was when. We're from Kent Place. But the best was yet to come. When the cops started doing a little poking around, they found enough video files to start a blockbuster video. That's if you wanted to start a blockbuster video where a guy were fucking dead bodies. Computer drives, floppy disks hidden, over 14 million necrophiliac images and videos. Video footage is of him getting busy with 9 year olds to 102 year olds. Ass fucking them, holding nothing back. He'd even have corpse orgies having 6 and 7 of them laid out on the floor, lining them up going down on them. He made Jimmy Savile look like Mr. Rogers. An officer just about to end his shift threw on one of Fuller's DVDs. And the first thing that popped up was Fuller on a slab having a threesome with two stiffs. But one of the stiffs he recognized was the graduate lawyer that he'd scraped off the road a few months back. And Fuller, well, he must have liked her because he spent three separate nights with her. Balls deep, only coming up to get air. Giving a whole new meaning to the phrase, getting your dinky stinky. Now fish and chip eating gobs figured that not only was Fuller a serial killer with more bodies expected to turn up, but he is the world's most prolific necrophiliac. And they got it all on tape. It's a uh, little stuff, there's some stuff stuck on the back of that one as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How? We, we know that... I want to admit that I am admitting the offences, but I don't really want to go into detail. Yeah. No. Okay. I'd appreciate that. And what offences are you admitting, David? As you've just described to me. Okay. In terms of the sexual penetration yes. of corpses? Okay. Do you know why you started? No. The second part to this, David, is the recording, isn't it? Of, of what's been happening. Okay? And we'll have to go through that in a little bit more detail. Just... Cobbs figure Muller had it all worked out. The mortuary staff went home at four in the afternoon. There were no cameras down there. He'd just go down and get his freak on all night long. He'd even order pizza and bring a bottle of wine. And I guess the best part was, he wasn't going to get anybody pregnant. And he told the officers to not knock it unless they tried it.